and live. All right, so welcome to Among the Ruins, episode one. I'm joined today by Ajax Telemann of the Thumos Rising Instagram page, a good friend of mine and um, part of the brainchild behind actually starting um, this series of conversations that I've been wanting to have. Ajax, how are you? I am tremendous, as is my custom. Good to hear. Um, so part of the reason that I wanted to start with the concept of foundations and solutions that you so nicely helped frame in terms of finding the correct title. Um, coming off a previous conversation I've had, there's obviously a lot of arguably just like unrestricted black pilling that happens when you start just noticing the patterns of the world around us. When you start, you know, doing any form of investigation into the root causes of, you know, the, the trajectory of certain states of the social order that we live in, you inevitably just, you know, exist in a state of, I would, I would argue it becomes tempting to exist in a state of constant pessimism. Now, if we're going to yeah. start talking about solutions, I think that the first thing you have to do is effectively a shift in mindset. And I know that you're, you're actually probably one of the best proponents of this. Uh, your Instagram page in, in particular um, does an amazing job of establishing, I would say, like a forward call to action and a direct uh, rejection of anything that is uh, overtly pessimistic for the sake of pessimism. Is that fair to say? Yes. Well, pessimism is useless. History was never made by people who thought they couldn't. And so the only fighting chance we have is to act as though we have a fighting chance. And the way we bring about positive change is by fighting for positive change. And I don't mean like violence fighting. You, you know, you fight with yourself to grow and become more disciplined and it develops skills, which is something we'll go into later. But the, the mindset is the, it's the first, one could say, foundational point of changing, of developing, is you have to make a choice in your mind and say, I need to do something differently. And... I do what I can. I do the work that I do in an attempt to encourage that choice in people, to attempt to inspire that choice in people as much as I'm able to in whatever ways I'm able to. Yeah, no, that's all. One, I've, I've, I've noticed that in conversations with you, you've, you've, You've embodied that in, uh, I would say, the way that you frame things and your encouragement towards people to take an action and to be active against a world that would actually demand you be passive. Um, and that's part of the, I would say, you know, people confuse like, people confuse pessimism with being skeptical or, um, you know, I would say that there's a difference between a healthy cynicism and an unhealthy cynicism. Like there's an element to seeing everything as part of this you know, downward trajectory and finding no positive element in which you can not only pull information from, but you know, a positive course of action that you can actively put yourself into and start trying to take a little bit of ownership over the consequences of you know, your initial periphery. Um, you know, fundamentally, pessimism, I would say, is a tool of what we're fighting against. Like, it, it actually encourages you to be pessimistic. They want you to take the black pill so that you have no hope, so that you can just actively, arguably, just seed over territory that can then be, um, you know, basically deemed gone. Do you see similar patterns? Well, yeah, their, their goal is to have everyone who is blue pilled, I guess you'd call it, everyone who is willing to be deceived, to have them think that everything is great or everything is awful, depending on what time of the year it is. But they want them to believe them and that the media tells the truth and that there's 
that the system is a good thing. And then they want the people who see the lies, who, who understand what the media is doing and what other corporate type entities are doing. They want the people who see that to be hopelessly pessimistic and defeatist so that they don't ever act to resist those entities. They don't ever act to facilitate positive change in their own lives and the lives of those around them as a direct result. And so they, uh, my belief is actually that they do a lot of posturing and that they attempt to make themselves far, far more scary to put it simply than they actually are. They, they attempt to make the people that recognize them for what they are, fear them as even more than what they are essentially. Yeah, I would say that there's a lot of self-deception actually at play too. Like, there's, I, I think there's a there's a yeah. sad trend in human nature to actually want to be passive more than being active. And one of the clear markers between someone that is arguably a leader is someone that is active because they're at the tip of the spear in terms of where that action is going. So the passive element comes down to people that actually just would rather be in some position of being told what to do and, you know, to wallow in the black pills, to just take the whole bottle is basically just a, it's, it's a self-proclamation that you'd rather just not do anything. You'd rather just say things are too hard. That way you actually don't have to take responsibility. Not for yourself, not for, well, it's uh, easier. It certainly is. Yes. Being, being active in the state, being, being in an active state is far more difficult because there's going to be the risk of, well, there's all risk. How about that? There's the risk of, first of all, doing something wrong, doing it incorrectly. Um, and potentially even crossing lines where, you know, you do catch the eye of the system in some way or other. But to your point, like there's this, there's this growing perception or, or, or a, uh, it's a mental state of assuming that the, the beast, for, for lack of a better term, Leviathan itself, the, you know, the ever encroaching powers of, you know, the, the, global, the global state is so powerful that you yourself can't do anything. And that's the wrong mindset to have. And in doing that, you actually give it, you give it points on the board more than you ever uh, do anything you don't help yourself by any means. You just, you just seed it victory without it even having to get into conflict. Right. Yeah. They don't, they don't have to put any effort into defeating someone that isn't fighting. And that sets up an interesting, I would say, I think from there. So what's the framework of a solution then? You know, so we've, we've come to an agreement that you need to, not fall into pessimism. The black pill is a false pill, or at least it is not helpful. Like you can notice things and be realistic. It does not mean you will. In, in terms of a solution, how do you stretch that framework? From your perspective, I mean, you're, you're, you're the one with well, the Well, the first... Well, the first solution is to step in any change, like we mentioned earlier, is believing in your mind that you're capable of it. And so you have to start by being realistic with yourself and saying, I have free will. I can choose to make better choices. I can choose to become healthier. I can choose to become stronger and begin enacting those beliefs. And that, you know, that leads into one of the most foundational aspects of all of this, which is health is being healthy, is having a clear mind, having the ability to think critically, you know, regardless of your IQ, the ability to reason through things, you know, I would actually fall on the lower end of academic intelligence, but I'm, I'm clear headed. I can, I can see things and grasp things and observe things. And um, you're an example of someone on the opposite side who is, very academically intelligent, very uh, uh, high IQ, um, 
and yet we see the same patterns and we we have uh, an agreement on reality because largely because we're both people who have embraced that responsibility that choice to make as many positive choices in our own lives as we can to take control of everything that we can regardless of whatever schemes or plots may be at play in the world we can have a positive impact on our communities we can have a positive impact on our families we can have a family we can move towards acquiring land and, and getting animals and developing self sufficiency. These are all goals. These are all achievable things that the black pill tries to hide from you, tries to tell you is impossible and, and oh, they'll just come and take it from you and blah, blah, blah. The reality is they don't have enough people to enforce that type of thing. And of course, that, that gets into a, a whole nother conversation, but do, do some simple population math, my friends. Uh, anyhow, um, ultimately, the foundation is making the choice to take control of what you can control and be honest about what you can control. Don't wave your hand and say, oh, you know, that's, that's out of my reach. Oh, that's beyond my control. Oh, there's nothing I can do about that. Forget yeah. that. No, get an- serious and get active about what you can control. Yeah, and I think you you pinning kind of the center of the bullseye around health actually aligns very much with, I think, the in, intuitional, like, like the natural reflex is to want people to advocate for themselves in a way that produces health outcomes for themselves, their families, and their communities. And ultimately, that's the complete counterexample of what we're up against which is an active incentive system that you don't advocate for yourself, you don't advocate for your family, and you don't advocate for your community, and you cede command control to an outside element, much akin to the way that a cancer actively draws energy away from other cells within an organism. I mean, I think the, the parallels of, I would say, trying to live in a world where you operate with a mindset with the one that you and I would both advocate for and one that we've connected with and how we've honestly like built more genuine relationships. When you do that, you end up with a more genuine relationship with health that sustains your capability to tolerate and actively repel negative elements that occur within your world. You basically can be your own self advocate, which is what requires, you know, a sense of critical thinking through, the growth of these giant apparatuses that emerge through the state or through corporate. And it's actively what they, they, they despise as well. Any, any form of, of self-proclamation towards self-direction, um, they take as a personal insult, as they should, because it's, it's kind of the right way to interpret what they are, is just a external force that's trying to take total ownership over your decision-making, over... I mean, arguably, it wants to replace whatever you can conceive of what God would be. That's why it, you know, we, we can talk more about the metaphysical nature of this. But in doing so, like... That's well, very true. Yeah. I mean, with, within the health, I would say health is probably the, the, the primary bullseye for a few reasons, because it's, it's the best form of self-advocacy that you could do. And it actually turns you into physically and like, like physically in the sense that someone that looks healthy and acts healthy and can do things and is capable is someone that other people would look to to learn things from. You actually become you become that leader that everyone's everyone on the on the overdose of black pill side is scared to be. And you actually like without saying anything, right. you physically represent yeah. something that's worth following. Right. Well, because people, regardless of whether or not folks admit this, people do judge books by their cover. People do pick up on how you look and give you varying degrees of credence as a result of that. You know, your appearance and your health, whether or not there's light in your eyes, whether or not, you know, you're smiling and, you know, happy, that that shows 
and it has an impact on how you're perceived. And when you're healthy and, and you're taking care of yourself, there's a pride that comes along with that. I don't mean a, a sort of arrogant, egotistical, uh, constant looking at oneself, but a pride in the sense that you've accomplished something and you continue to accomplish something by rejecting all of the poison that is offered to us daily and taking control of your health. And the reason, as you mentioned, the black pillars are afraid to step into leadership roles is because they've denied that responsibility. And as a result, their appearance has suffered. And as a result, they're ashamed of what they look like, of, of having rounded over shoulders from constantly reading QAnon messages on the web boards and, and freaking out about all of the pornos they're forced to watch. <laughs> it shows. People can tell. Yeah, the, I mean, fundamentally, I'm still trying to find a way to, to unbridge the two, but I, I think it holds is that by having health, it effectively means that you're someone that's capable of making responsible decisions. You're capable of making the correct levels of discernment. And to be able to discern correctly, to be able to, how about this? To, yeah, to this, to this sort of entry degree. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. It's necessary for, for, for an individual organ to be able to discern health from, from, from health from illness or health from disease is necessary for survival. And I think it's, I think it's so tied in deeply into our subconscious that that's actively what we seek for from someone that's leadership. I mean, I think the cheap, the cheap thing is to say that a leader grants you safety and security, but I would add a level of nuance to it to say that that safety and security means that they're actually guiding you on a state towards health and you're stable and secure in the footsteps you're making in your own active measures in the sense that you can trust the food you eat is going to be good for you. You can trust that the, the rules that govern the space you're in will be upheld. The fact that justice will be upheld in some way and it won't be just used for some sort of Machiavellian power game. That effectively... You know, these are all echoes from an, from a single standpoint, which is you take responsibility for the ability to discern good from evil. And not that healthy people, however you want to, you know, kind of like, you know, not, not necessarily in the modern sense. I'm not saying like someone that's like a 6'10 giga chad with ripped abs is good and a fat person is evil. But at any point you can make that decision for yourself and the ones that follow that that stepwise process of pursuing virtue are actually going to see all the lateral benefits that follow, which are going to be the physical elements represented within a healthy body, a healthy mind, a healthy set of habits, a healthy family, and in turn echo into a healthy community. Absolutely. And we, we live in a time where, Communities are starved for those types of people. The time is now to take responsibility, to rise up, to become that person for your community, regardless of whether or not anyone else around you is doing it. You know, if you're listening to this, chances are you have at least a, a slight interest in health and strength and accountability and growth. And so step up, take responsibility, be the best example you can be for those around you and, and take a healthy pride in that. Hold yourself to that standard. Don't allow yourself to fall into pessimism and defeatism and allow that mindset to stop you from doing all of the work that you can do, making all the changes that you can change. You know, nothing's stopping you from going and getting a, a job in construction or uh, being a mechanics apprentice or, or learning some kind of trade job that will allow you to give back to your community in a tangible way. You know, there's so much that can be done instead of just 
you know, sitting around complaining about what the grabblers did to you today. Yeah, I think that's a perfect point to start transitioning to like trying to sketch out what that what what different forms of that framework can look like because there's a lot of different vectors that can build off of that. I think that's the that's the correct like, energy that sits within the engine. But now you need the orientation of where you send that energy so that you can get the best returns. And it's going to come down to everybody's individual context. But you know, I think as you mentioned, like there's there's physic like on the physical skills. The analog world, I would say, like, yes, we need people that are based that can also code. But when the system collapses, which if you any sort of intuition that it will, we're going to need people with physical skills, a physical understanding of the world and a, a way to manage physical space. So understanding, understanding the basics of I mean, if, if you're someone in a position where this is what you value and, and, are, and want to be responsible for, step into it and do it, which would be learn the, learn the ability to have a craft that supports home and shelter. Learn the ability to have a craft that supports um, the ability to tend the land. Understand, like, be someone that someone could ask about what is good soil versus bad soil. Like, all of this information is available, but... What's, what's becoming less and less is an impetus of people seeking this knowledge out, which you know, traditionally used to be a given. Like you knew this secondhand because this is what everyone did. But now we live in a state where, right. where the synthetic and digital world is so prevalent and so deeply intertwined into our daily life that we have blinders on to the, the information that was once so pre once so widely known that we have like this cultural amnesia over effectively what it means to be part of a community and part of being a community is that sharing of skills right well that's you know skills are what communities are built on you know you can't you can't sustain any form of life without Cultivation, you know, when it comes to humans, obviously, plenty of plants grow on their own. But when it comes to humans, when it comes to families, that requires food, shelter, uh, social fulfillment. It requires helping one another. It requires having relationships with the people around you in order to be strong, in order to not be reliant on uh, external offers. And that, that's a huge way that people are subverted in our culture is by denying responsibility and accepting handouts, whether it's welfare or various other forms of uh, governmental assistance. They, that reliance gives the system power over them because they, you know, if they don't, submit to the system, then they don't get their lollipops and fancy pants anymore. And so the critical aspect of not being subject to that beast system, the Leviathan, as you called it, is being self-reliant, is developing the ability to clothe yourself, to house yourself, to feed yourself, that those are all goals that we should be moving towards. And if you're a young man right now thinking about your career, get a trade job. And, and it, you know, whether that's going into construction, there's all sorts of different works to be done in construction, whether that's concrete work, carpentry or, or um, roofing, myriad others. There are plenty in construction alone, or if you like tinkering with things, you know, look into being a mechanic or figure out what trade you gravitate towards, but learn a trade, start working with your hands, start gaining physical skills that will never go out of style. People will always need roofs over their heads. People will always need their engines fixed, whether that's a car or a lawnmower, whether that's a weed eater or a radical scooter. <laughs> people, 
will always need plumbing done. People, there are certain foundational trades that will always be needed. And one of the best ways to boost your own value as a person is to develop those skills so that you have something tangible to offer your community so that you have something to provide. You know, I'm, I'm not the person that's, that, that's going to ring the bell and say, the end is nigh, you know, it's all about to go down. I don't know when things will crash, uh, although it sure looks like they're going to. But I'm not saying it's going to be next week or next year, or even within the next 10 years. The point is that if it happens, would you be an asset or a burden? Yeah, and, and something I'd and it's add, important to ask those questions, and it's important to seek their answers. Yeah, and, and I, I think to, to follow on with what you're saying there, how will others perceive you? Will they perceive you as an asset or will they perceive you as a burden? Because if you have skills, that question is going to be answered immediately just upon looking on you because you will be able to take action when time to take action is necessary. And another piece that I would say is like, not only just go learn skills, but then find people you want to share those skills with. If you, if you understand how to, you know, manage, um, if you're, if you're tinkering with something, you know how to like arguably like change the oil in your lawnmower, right? Something small like that. Do what you can to see who else near you needs to know that skill as well. The more that you spread that, the more that you spread what you know, and offer your capabilities, the more that you will not only build your ability to explain it and build your own understanding of that dynamic, but you're going to prove out that you're an asset to people. They'll come to you for other things than just the knowledge that you exhibited there. The fact that you have the capability to know one thing is typically a momentum movement that shows that you have the capability to know two to four to 16. It exponentially grows the more that you build your capacity to hone skills and find new opportunities to leverage them. This is another reason why, you know, you can't let yourself fall into the black pill of just being passive and wallowing is because you end up missing out on all of the unknown compounding effects of building your own skill sets and finding different ways to apply them that are going to, I mean, radically alter the way that you perceive the world. And it, and it will defang the enemy. Because it's only going to make it, it's going to prove out exactly how inept it is and how, how much of it is just, you know, purely using hedonism, pleasure and comfort as false uh, security, as well as how it manages its own ranks purely through, you know, kleptocratic narcissism. Anything to say to that, Ajax? Sorry, could you repeat that? That last part? Oh, just anything to add to that? I think the the last the last uh, word I said just, is that the system operates. Oh yeah, with no, absolutely, platform. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, so one one no, framework. No, I, I heard yeah. your spiel. I didn't hear the the very last thing you said. Oh, I was just handing it off to you. If you had anything to say. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned the ways that gaining, gaining those skills expands you, and it's, it expands you on multiple fronts. You know, not only are you gaining a valuable skill and something to offer your community, but the very act of learning a new skill makes you better at learning new skills. There's exponential growth that occurs, and additionally, with trade jobs specifically, with physical jobs specifically, you are forced to be honest, you are forced to have a relationship with reality. What is up and what is down? What is flush and what is not? What is square and what is not? You have to be honest about these things or else you fail. And that principle of being realistic permeates into the rest of your life in, in a very powerful way. So it, it, it expands your character on all fronts. Yeah, another piece. So building out this concept of sketching a framework for solutions and the different foundational elements. So first of all, mindset, having skills, uh, health, right, as well. 
I think another piece is the social interaction demand, which in and of itself is a skill, but I actually want to chalk it up as its own piece in terms of be someone that's personable and enjoyable for others to be around. And I, I extend this not only to other people in your like little based circles, because that's effectively everyone's going to be listening to this is probably coming from the same, you know, like 10 few bubbles that are all in like kind of one ideological containment. But for you to navigate the world going forward, you're going to need to know how to interact with people and specifically people that are like the deepest shade of blue you could ever imagine. You need to know how to talk to normies in a way that doesn't actively repel them. You need to do it in a way that where, and I'm not asking anyone to go against their principles, but you need to act in a way that exemplifies the leadership that is necessary. And they'll follow. Because effectively, that's what the biggest blue pill normie is. It's Absolutely. Just saying, they just follow what they think to be as the highest authority. And I'm not demanding that someone be authoritarian, but I ask you to be an authority over your own decision making and do it in a way that people will look at and they'll intuitively, they'll intuitively trust you, especially if you have skills, look healthy and carry the right mindset of, you know, not a, not a naive optimism, but a realistic optimism. Ajax, does that track with, a, a courage, if you will. And yeah, a yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The that optimism, that that glow that you have when you are taking responsibility and you have that aforementioned pride in the choices you're making where you don't have shame, people pick up on that. And in regards to the normies the the blue pill people most of them aren't bad people they're just easily manipulated they've just been lied to and they've grown up in a culture that heavily reinforced those lies but they're not bad people one of the critical errors of uh, people of the folks that tended to be closer to the truth than say, the leftists, as much as I love that term. Um, one of the critical mistakes people on the sort of right side of things made for the past 50 or 60 years is the abandonment of rhetoric. They, they just thumped their Bibles and, and stated statistics to no avail, while people more on the left side of things appealed to emotions and dominated the rhetoric field. If we want to facilitate positive change, we have to be not only truthfully sound and honorable and consistent, but rhetorically appealing. And that doesn't mean dishonest in any capacity, but it means that you are personable. It means that you are confident and you know, funny to some extent or charming and and enjoyable to talk to. Like you were saying, it's important to have these social skills. It's important to have love for your fellow man, regardless of how deceived they might be. It's important to still ultimately hope for as many people as possible to see the truth. And you aren't going to get people to come to your side of things by if, by going up to them and calling them an NPC and tell them they need to stop having soy and seed oils uh, so that they can be an alpha Chad like you. No, they're going to notice that this healthy, confident person, like we said before, is kind, that there's love in their eyes, that they have compassion for their fellow man. And that those the subconscious and, and sort of visceral uh, reactions from people that they may, they may not even know how to articulate, but they're experiencing it, goes a long distance towards change in their lives, towards them paying more attention to what you have to say and paying more attention to the choices you're making, because they'll crave that honesty. They'll crave that 
strength. And the types that don't, the types that are resentful, they're not, they're not going to get on our side anyway. So, yeah, <laughs> so I'm over. mostly speaking in regards to the, the simple blue pilled normies that just sort of grew up in that culture, the people that we would hope to see grow and, and come to the truth. Yeah, I would I would describe that that group of people is it's people that are comfortable with vice but have no ability to discern vice from virtue or at least are not willing to discern for the moment of either personal comfort. It's accepting comfort over discernment. And you know this this ability to be some somebody that somebody wants to follow. One, I think we have to go back to that concept of like a person that you'd want to follow has correct discernment, meaning that they can see virtue from vice clearly. Not only can they see it and they can speak about it, but they also act it out. And by acting with virtue, I think you, you, you set a pace that someone would intuitively want to be around. And intu- how about this? it would intuitively make you more correct in their eyes on all matters. Because virtue and vice, by, by my assessment, and I'm just, just one lone anonymous internet person, but virtue and vice are more than just words or interpretations. They're, they're actual physical states of being that echo into the body itself. And they manifest in our ability to perceive the world, which is why the people that you know we need to ignore, that we're never going to convince, they're effectively caught up in this downward spiral of vice that there's no pulling out of unless they have something traumatic happen to them. And what you need to be is someone that is so far on the ascent that, I mean, people will actively want to be around you. You will, you will actively pull people towards you and you will, you will, Oh, you'll be more than really what anyone can actually, you know, conceive it's it's hard to describe and I'm, I'm rambling a bit ajax do you have something to add yeah well joy is charismatic and there's a critical difference between comfort and joy and the people who are as you said unwilling to make those changes are so addicted to comfort that they're willing to lie to themselves and tell themselves that comfort is joy and stay in their state of vice. Whereas people that are virtuous and people that have taken responsibility realize that actual joy, like true happiness, satisfaction, comes from working, comes from helping people, comes from creating positive change in the world, you know, bringing order to chaos, as some might put it. Uh, that's where true joy comes from. And the more you pursue that, the more it radiates in your countenance, the more obvious it is to people that you have that joy. And people that aren't simply filled with hatred gravitate towards that joy because they want it. Because deep down, some some part of themselves recognizes that they're vice and their weakness and the hollow repetition of their lives isn't all there is, you know, that's not the end of things. And it, so many of them have been brought into this lie that what you do doesn't matter. And even, excuse me, even the blue pilled normies, that think the media is honest and telling them the truth are also told that what they do doesn't matter because they're just a speck of dust on a speck of dust and a galaxy of specks of dust. And believing that provides the temporary comfort of saying, well, I can have my comfortable vices because what I do doesn't matter. But to have the courage to say, no, what I do does matter is the first step towards creating that joy, towards doing meaningful work that will allow you to have joy. 
by by choosing to participate in the back and forth of pain and joy, pain and happiness, where you sacrifice in the short term to gain in the long term. You know, lifting weights is the clearest example of that. You suffer in the short term to gain in the long term. Once you have the courage to accept that and enter that dance, you gain access to joy as long as you follow through with that belief and that acceptance of responsibility. And the more experienced we get in that dance, the more fun the dance becomes. Even when you're in pain, so to speak, you still find joy in the knowledge that you're participating in that dance. And a lot of people believe that pain is just the worst thing that there is. And tying this back in to be an example to those around you, you want to show people how beautiful that dance is, the joy that you can obtain by stepping forward and playing your part, stepping forward and accepting the pain of labor for the joy of skill, of value, of provision. And the more people that we can demonstrate that to, the more people will accept that responsibility and join in that dance themselves. And that's how the world changes. This happens over decades, but that's how. Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd add to that by saying that, you know, this, these have long been known concepts. I think even in, um, in Dante's Inferno, it's that the hell of vice is actually the vice itself. And the heaven of virtue is virtue itself. So by being caught in the vice, it's not that like you'll be sent somewhere. It's actually just existing in that state of vice and knowing no other reality. Similarly, on the counter example, by acting with virtue and doing things that basically embody those virtuous entities, you, 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 you have the possibility of attaining a state of being that makes it so that you can act with full security on all of these principles and then gain from that and just elevate the whole perception of what the world is. But it comes down to first acknowledging that there's a distinction and a discernment between giving in, being passive, and taking active measures towards elements that contribute to the beneficial health of yourself, your family, and beyond. And I would say that to close out, I think probably the best way to frame this is that if you're in a position where you see that you want to make an exit or some sort of disconnection from the trajectory of the overall growth of this, you know, for lack of a better term, the Leviathan that seeks to consume all into itself, and you want to exit, the first start is to have a mindset that can orient yourself towards proper discernment between virtue and vice. Now, I don't have a framework so that you know the difference from there, but I think if you look back through the traditions of, of humankind, that's, the, that's why you have a tradition, is so that you have the capabilities to make that discernment. But then after that, all practice follows. The skills that you develop, the ability to decide how you take care of yourself and all the tools and strategies that you would you would do to pursue that and your ability to carry yourself and communicate with others those follow first from this mindset do you concur ajax how's that yeah absolutely absolutely you know, as we said in the beginning, it starts with the mindset. It starts with accepting that responsibility. And, you know, the, you know, as we were saying, the way to change is accepting the responsibility of change and providing that example for people and doing it with joy, doing it with that pride, that healthy pride of, of making the right choice as much as you're able to, as much as you can to your understanding and rejecting the black pill, rejecting that idea that there is no hope. 
because that leads nowhere. The black pill leads nowhere. And that accepting responsibility inherently requires movement because by accepting that responsibility and acting in accordance with that, you put yourself on a path to growth using the gym as an example. Once you start training to gain strength, you have to add weight. You have to add reps. You have to move and increase and expand width wise with a wide back. But (laughs) the, the pattern of progression is that of movement is that of expansion and the vices and the black pills and the pessimism keep you stagnant and stagnation is death. Agreed. I mean, in full, I mean, I had a very uh, awesome conversation today with someone who's um, deep in biochemistry and it's amazing that the parallels around, I mean, effectively the ultimate lens comes down to energy. And are you an active and efficient user of energy or are you seeding energy? And is something else pulling energy away from you? Because as soon as you lose energy, you're a dead organism. And the healthier you are, the better tolerance, capability, and efficiency you have for high energy. And effectively, skills, they are, you know, a a greater skill is one that is more in the energy that it's using towards its end. The greater health you have, the better meta, like, like effectively metabolic health is about an efficiency of the use of energy. And all of these things tie down to, you know, it, you have to start by altering your mindset and choosing to be an active agent within the world as you see it. And then you build from there and you know, good things, good things will follow from that. I, no one can ever guarantee you heaven on the other side. The final judgment comes down to a supreme authority beyond yourself, but by pursuing action and and actively choosing to engage, you set yourself up to be willing to be judged. All right. On that note, I think we are about. And regardless of the outcome, regardless Yeah, you're good. Go. Oh, we might have lost Ajax for a bit here. Oh, okay. Regardless of the outcome of your effort. Oh, hold on. Have I come back? Have I returned? Yeah, you're good. You're good. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're all good. Okay. All right. So regardless of the outcome of your efforts, regardless of how how so-called successful your efforts are, you will secure the joy of having tried and evaded the despair of wondering what if. And that is the worst case scenario. That is if you fail in everything, at least you can say you tried. When, of course, in reality, the chances are if you give it all of your will and truly seek growth, you will obtain it. Absolutely. All right. On that note, I think we're about time. Ajax, do you have anything? um, Where can people find you, first of all? Oh, I'm on Instagram, and that's all for now, as of now. But I'm there at Thumos underscore rising, and I post poetry about masculinity, uh, about responsibility, so a lot of the things we discussed today about pursuing growth and optimism throughout whatever trials you're enduring in life at whatever moment. Fantastic. I encourage people to go check that page out. Um, certainly always uh, a welcome white pill to read a Thumos Rising poem. Um, I'm The Heroic Will. You can find me on Instagram at The Heroic Will. Haven't posted there in a bit, but we're making a comeback. You can also find me here at this YouTube channel. Ajax will be here certainly many, many more times. I think we're going to turn this into a more regular um, opportunity for conversation. Um, 
appreciate everyone that had the opportunity to catch this conversation. And uh, thank you and goodbye.